President Obama is cruising around the world trying to explain to the world that he's not a loser. And Harry Reid, who is on his exit from the Senate, oh, may he enjoy political oblivion, he set the standard for what has to happen under a President Trump and Mitch McConnell leading the Senate and the filibuster rule. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Welcome to the program, friend. I'm your host, Randall Terry. There's a lot on the news that we're going to talk about, but we are going to have to focus on this program and in, and in politics, we're going to have to focus on the filibuster rule and the cloiture vote and its implications for a Trump presidency. And I don't just mean focus on it today. We're going to have to focus on it for weeks. My wife and I, our longtime political activist, she used to work on Capitol Hill in, the, in one of the U.S. senators' offices, okay? And the cloiture vote and the filibuster rule is something that rarely comes up but it's come up a lot more in recent years. It comes up procedurally in the Senate, but most Americans are not paying attention. They're kind of tone deaf to it. So we're going to explain it over and over. And I am going to, for my part with this program, use my voice and perhaps some billboards in Kentucky to say, Mitch McConnell, support President Trump and the filibuster rule. Now, what is a filibuster and why is it so important? The filibuster is a rule that the Senate imposed upon itself. It is not a law. It's a rule for the Senate. It's a procedural rule that basically made the U.S. Senate one of the most deliberative bodies in the world that respected the rights of the minority. So keep that in mind, all right? <clears throat> If you've ever seen Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, that was a depiction of the old filibuster rules. And I would encourage you, if you haven't seen it, go see it. It's a Jimmy Stewart movie. Rent it. It's a great movie. A great movie. All right, so the filibuster rule, the spirit of it was this. When a, when a law is proposed, it takes a majority of the House of Representatives and a majority of the Senate and then the President's signature. If the president vetoes the law, federal law, it needs two-thirds of the House and two-thirds of the Senate to override his veto. Well, early on in the Senate, they adopted a rule in the early 1800s that a senator could talk as long as he wanted, as long as he could hold the floor. He could talk to try and stall a bill from being passed and for him to be heard at the time, it was all hymns. So if there was something that the senator from Tennessee thought was horribly egregious, or the senator, I'm sorry, the senator from Maryland was horribly egregious, he could keep talking and argue with his fellow senators, and it was called a filibuster. It's from a Dutch word that's connected to the word pirate. He was actually pirating the Senate, taking over the Senate. Talk, 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 talk. But the goal of it was so that his objections could be really heard and really discussed. And he could control the Senate floor as long as he could hold it. He couldn't leave and go to the bathroom even, literally. So in 1917, Woodrow Wilson, again, not a friend of liberty, Woodrow Wilson asked the Senate to change the rule so that a two-thirds majority could shut down a filibuster. It was called a cloiture vote. And he said, look, have a, create a rule for the Senate that says we can, with a two-thirds majority, we can end a filibuster. We can say, look, you've got 30 hours, and then we're ending this once they invoke the cloiture rule. Then they changed it. Then the Senate changed, because again, these are Senate parliamentary rules that govern their internal discussions and debates. They changed it to a three-fifths majority, 60 out of 100 votes. So you've heard in the news over the years, well, they didn't meet the 60-vote threshold. And some people scratch their heads and say, what is this 60-vote threshold? What it is is a way of <clears throat> giving a, a, 
an easy pass to the minority party in the Senate to say, we're going to filibuster. If you don't, if you don't uh, stop this legislation, we're going to filibuster and it's not going to pass. So then the party with the majority would either have to have 60 votes to say, no, you're not going to filibuster. You're not going to hold this up. Or they would have to get some of the members of the opposition party to do a cloiture vote and say, sorry, we're not going to f- uh, force this legislation to have 60 votes. A simple majority is going to carry this. It, it doesn't get worse. It gets easier. If you can just retain that. Filibuster went from one or two people filibustering to minority parties saying, we've got 41 votes and you've only got 59 and you can't break this filibuster. Until, I believe it was 2013, I'll look at it when we come back. But Harry Reid changed a huge portion of the filibuster rules and paved the way for Mitch McConnell to change them even further for Trump's agenda. Stay with me, don't go away. If you own a business and would like to advertise on our program, please contact us. We are currently seen on over 130 television stations from coast to coast. We air at 8 p.m. Eastern and then all times are local. We have a lot of reach, friend, and this is an opportunity at a great price for you to get your product or your service in front of hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people. Also, if there's something that's important to you and you'd like to have a month where you just say thank you to this ministry or promote a certain ministry or a certain cause, contact us. Our rates are incredibly affordable. You'd be surprised. And you, again, can reach into hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of homes. We're currently seen in possibly in over 30 million homes. So give us a call, give us an email, and we'll put a commercial up for you. Does our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, have authority in the political realm, the judicial realm, economics, education? The answer is yes. And does he want his servants to be the leaders in those realms? Again, yes. If you want to learn how you can be a leader in the power bases of America, get the series, Taking Back the Gates. Hi friend, I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi cut a deal in 2011 that enabled them to pass Obamacare and to get around the filibuster rule in the Senate. Basically, they used a reconciliation bill, a reconciliation spending bill, which did not apply to the filibuster rules of the Senate. So they completely circumvented their own rules on a totally partisan vote. So only Democrats voted for it and all Republicans voted against it in the Senate and the House. So you may remember there was a lot of rancor, a lot of bitterness back then. We're reaching back five years now because the Senate, basically Harry Reid and in, in, in collusion with Nancy Pelosi, violated the rules of the Senate to get Obamacare passed. Fast forward two years. The Republicans were angry, as you can imagine, and they began to block certain appointments of President Obama using the filibuster rule. Remember, the filibuster rule is that basically the minority party can stop legislation or stop appointments or stop nominations unless the majority party or a a group of majority party and some minority party have 60 votes to shut down the filibuster, okay? 60 votes is required to shut down a filibuster. A filibuster is used to pirate the Senate and to keep some legislation from passing or some nominations from being um, secured, voted on. So they used, you used to hear the phrase, the nuclear option. Do you remember hearing that? The nuclear option, right? The nuclear option was changing the Senate rules. And Harry Reid used to threaten that. He used to say, I'm going to use the nuclear option. We're going to, because it basically means we're going to nuke everything. We're going to blow it up. 
And in 2013, I'm reading the headline from the Washington Post story back in 2013, November of uh, 23, I believe. Let's see. November 23, no, November 21, 2013. Here's the headline of the Washington Post. Read Democrats trigger nuclear option, eliminate most filibusters on nominees. All right. The Republicans were holding up certain appointments of President Obama because they thought these guys are whacked out liberals and weren't just going to filibuster. So Reid said, fine, we've had it. We're going to change the rules. And there was a hue and cry from Mitch McConnell and Harry Reid, who had been against changing the filibuster rules for some time, said, uh, and I quote, <clears throat> this is quoting from the Washington Post story. Reed said the chamber must evolve beyond parliamentary roadblocks. Quote, the American people this believe the Senate is broken and I believe the American people are right, he added. He said, adding, it's time to get the Senate working again. McConnell linked the rule change to the methods used to approve Obama's health care law solely with Democratic votes. The normally reserved GOP leader paced at his desk during his speech, often turning his back to Democrats to address only his fellow Republicans. Quote, it is a sad day in the history of the Senate, McConnell told reporters, calling the move, quote, a Democrat power grab. All right. So Harry Reid changed the rules back in 2013, 2013. But it's even crazier than that. In October of this past year before the election, when Harry Reid said or thought that Hillary was going to win the presidency, he had a press conference and he said, look, I've already changed the rules once. And if the Republicans, by the way, with this rule change that Harry Reid did in 2013, did not apply to the Supreme Court picks. Okay. So it was basically lower level nominees were done with the Republicans being able to stop them by filibuster but we're still going to let the Supreme Court nominees face filibuster challenge if need be. So on one of his victory lap press conferences, Harry Reid opened the door for Mitch McConnell. He said, in effect, he said, after Hillary wins the presidency, if the Senate does not control the House, or rather the, the majority, we'll change the rules again. He said, I did it before. And... He snapped his fingers, said the rules will change that fast. Harry, thank you for the game plan. Mitch McConnell just needs to pick it up now and use it. I'll be right back. Friend, this program is supported by friends like you who believe in what we are doing. We run a very tight ship. Thankfully, we are on over 130 stations across the country having tremendous impact. We get emails every day. We get letters in the mail. Not every day, but almost every day. We hear from people who love what we're doing. What people don't understand is that it's sort of expensive to produce a television show like this. It doesn't require earth-shattering funds, funds, but it, it does require financial help. So I am asking you, if you enjoy this program, throw us a $10 or a $20 bill every once in a while, or even a $50 or a $100 check. You see the address there on the screen. Your gifts are not tax deductible, by the way, because we want to be able to say what we want to say regarding politics without the IRS telling us no. So if you like the program, I ask for your support. Hi, friends. I'm Randall Terry. I appreciate you joining me. All right, I'm going to read now from Harry Reid's uh, press coverage on October 24th. That was just a couple weeks before the election where Trump surprised most people. It didn't surprise me. It didn't surprise a lot of you because you're a regular participant in this program. So he said, I really do believe that I have set the Senate so when I leave, we're going to be able to get judges done with a majority. It takes only a simple majority anymore. And 
It's clear to me that if Republicans try to filibuster another circuit court judge, but especially a Supreme Court justice, I've told them how, and I've done it. Not just talking about it. I did it in changing the rules of the Senate. It'll have to be done again. They mess with the Supreme Court. It'll change just like that. In my opinion, Harry Reid said, snapping his fingers together. So I've set that up. I feel very comfortable with that. And then he said, Reid has previously warned that a rules change could be coming down the pike if Dems win back the Senate. In an August interview with the New York Times, Reid said that rules changes were possible in 2017 if Republicans continued to filibuster oh, to widely block a Democratic agenda in the Senate. Stop. You hear what he said? If you Republicans try and block a Democratic agenda in the Senate with a Hillary presidency and the Senate Dem or the Democrats taking back the Senate, we'll change the rules, baby. The end. We're going to be able to do stuff in Washington, in the Senate, with a simple majority. Now, most Americans would say, well, sure. I, I thought that that's what we had elections for. If you control the Senate and you control the House and the president introduces a bill or the House does or the Senate does, it, it's a law, <clears throat> then a simple majority carries it. Now, I want you to listen to me, friends, because you've got to grasp how significant this is. Harry Reid said, if you try and block our agenda, remember, he wasn't just limiting it to Supreme Court judges. If you try and block our agenda, we're changing the rules. The end. Okay, we've done it before. We'll do it again. And we'll let the Senate run on a simple majority. Most Americans would say, bravo. Most Americans from both parties would say, bravo. So, think about President Trump's agenda. All right, this is not in any ethical hierarchy or political party, but just think about it. Think about the 28 items that he had on the, his contract with the American voter. Renegotiating NAFTA, dealing with trade with China and, and Chinese currency manipulation. Uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP. Supreme Court nomination to fill Justice Scalia's seat. Defunding Planned Parenthood, something really dear to my heart and a lot of your hearts. Think about the wall, people. Think about the southern border. If President Obama, or rather, if President Trump and some colleagues in the House and in the Senate get a bill introduced to build the wall, and the Senate says, we're filibustering. The, the Senate Democrats say, we're filibustering. Mitch McConnell needs to just pick up the playbook and say, yeah, Harry Reid was right. We're going to do what Harry Reid said. You're blocking our agenda. You're blocking what the American electorate said through this last election. And we're going to put the will of the American people ahead of arcane Senate rules. Please understand this, friend. This is about Senate rules. This is not about the Constitution. It's not about the law. It's not about majorities. It's about the honor and the integrity of the Senate. Hey, Harry Reid paved the way for you, Mitch McConnell. Follow his lead and support Trump's agenda. I'll be right back. I'm Randall Terry. I want to invite you to go to our website. Almost every book that I have ever written is available as a PDF online for free. We have a ton of products, training materials, tools that are available for you for free. All we ask for is that you give us your email address. That's it. So that we can stay in touch with you and yes, from time to time, ask you to support this work. So. I'm inviting you, go to the, the website. Now, for those of you who say, well, I, I don't want a PDF, I want a real book. You can get one of my books. All you have to do is pay for shipping and handling and then give whatever gift you want. And if you can't afford anything, we'll send you the book for free. Just pay shipping and handling. 
Why are we doing all this? Because we want to change the direction of the country and we need to raise up a fresh generation of warriors to do that. That's why we have this tool. I invite you, go to the website, see for yourself. Does God judge nations? If so, why? What does his judgment look like? And is America under the judgment of God? I answer these questions and many others using the scriptures in my book called The Judgment of God. I encourage you to go to our website and download your own PDF and study the scriptures on the judgment of God. I'm Randall Terry. Welcome to Voice of Resistance. If you are a student of history, which I hope you are, you will know that the filibuster was used for the purpose of talking and rarely was successful in actually stopping legislation or stopping appointees from being confirmed that were nominated by the president. But then it became a weapon, a political weapon, to force the Senate to have a two-thirds majority and then a three-fifths majority when they lowered it to 60 votes out of 100. <clears throat> and it's, it has nothing to do with our laws and our Constitution. That's what I want you to understand. And Harry Reid was a late convert. And originally, Harry Reid did not want to change the filibuster rules. But then he had a conversion when he realized, look, we've got an agenda and we do not want a Republican minority being the tail that wags the dog. And so <clears throat> we're going to abandon 200 years of collective Senate history. That's why Mitch McConnell was saying, it's a dark day in the history of the Senate. That's why he said, no, the Senate is broken. I've, I've come to agree with the American people. So here's, here's the problem. Senator McConnell is an old man. He is, and I say this in quotes, a Southern gentleman who likes rules and likes parliamentary procedure and wants to get along. And he's not a fighter. I mean, the, the only time I've seen him have a fight that I can remember is with um, him saying that we're not gonna, we're not gonna bring up Obama's uh, pick for the uh, Supreme Court during this election year. No, it's a done deal, not gonna happen, the end. That's what ticked off Harry Reid so much. And that's why Harry Reid in August and then again in October had these press statements where he said, we're gonna make it so that a simple majority can pass a Hillary pick. We're not going to let the Republicans do what they just did during this election cycle. We're changing the filibuster rules yet again. And if they get in the way of a Democrat agenda, we're going to change the rules. So friends, do, do you understand? This is Senate rules. It is not a matter of law. And Harry Reid was only too happy to get around the filibuster rules in 2011 and just use a reconciliation bill where the reconciliation bill is where a house passes a bill and the Senate passes a bill, but the language isn't the same. So they have to create two bills that the language is identical for the president to sign it into law. And that's how he got Obamacare passed, attaching it to a reconciliation bill. He told in, in one of the biggest pieces of legislation in modern memory, he told the minority party in the Senate to go to the hot place. Go to hell. We don't care what you do. We don't care what you say. We're, we're just going to run roughshod over you. Harry Reid does not have, I'm sorry, <clears throat> Mitch McConnell does not have that type of fight in him. That's my fear. My fear is very simple. I've given you this in-depth look at the filibuster rule and the cloiture vote rule to override because Mitch McConnell needs to follow Harry Reid's playbook, and I don't think he has the backbone to do it. That's my fear. There's a long way of saying Mitch McConnell is the weak link in the fight ahead. And if I was President Trump's advisor, I'd say, Mr. Trump, you need to be having people approach Mitch McConnell right now, right now about changing the filibuster rules. Then I'd be talking to Ted Cruz, and I'd be talking to Sessions, and I'd be talking to Cotton from Arkansas, and I'd be talking to people who, who get it that we've got a chance right now, it only, might only be a two-year chance to make massive changes in this country. And if the filibuster rule stands in our way, then trample it underfoot 
and let freedom live and the filibuster rule perish. In social revolution, peaceful social revolution, there are rules. And those rules have been established by social revolutions of the past. And the Christian community in America has failed to obey a lot of those rules. And that's why we keep losing. I put together Insurrect the Next, a 14 part television series on the history and the theology of social revolution. I encourage you to watch it. It will make you a force for righteousness for social revolution.